Hello folks, welcome back to Chemical Reactor Design. This time with Chapter 4, Isothermal Reactor Design. So this is Lecture 17. I divided this lecture into three segments just for simplicity. In this chapter, Okay, so chapters one and two discussed mole balances on reactors and the manipulation of these balances to predict reactor sizes, meaning that we have developed the design equations starting from mole balances. Then we move to chapter 13. In chapter 13, we discussed reactions, its rates, rate lows, and we utilize the stoichiometry related to these reactions. So in chapter 14, we're going to combine all of the above. So we're going to utilize the rate laws and the stoichiometry for the reactions, for different reactions. And we're going to combine them with the design equations that we have developed for the reactors to design various types of isothermal reactors. We divide the chapter into two parts. Part one, where we're going to utilize mole balances written in terms of conversion. And then part two, we're going to utilize mole balances written in terms of concentrations and molar flow rates. Again, in chapter 14, we're going to focus our attention on reactions and reactors that are operated isothermally, as opposed to the design of non-isothermal reactors, that, which we're going to discuss in chapter 8. In this chapter, we achieve our learning objectives through designing a multiple reactor chemical plant or a multi-reactor chemical plant that produces 2,000 million pounds per year of ethylene glycol from a feedstock of ethane. So here we go. This is our multi-reactor chemical plant where we're going to produce 200 million pound of ethylene glycol per year from a feedstock of ethane and this chemical plant consists of many equipments that we're not going to design because different equipments you're going to design them in different courses but in this course we're going to design the reactors so here we go we have this is one reactor which is a plug flow reactor and then this is the second reactor which is a packed bed reactor and then we have a CSTR. The third reactor is a CSTR. And then we're going to also talk about batch reactors. Okay, so let's start chapter four, isothermal reactor design. And we're going to start with part one, mole balances in terms of conversion. Design structure for isothermal reactors. One of the primary goals of this chapter is to solve chemical reactor reaction engineering problems by using logic. Again, by using logic rather than memorizing which equation applies where. This logical procedure is summarized in the following five steps. First, choosing the applicable mole balance, then writing the correct rate law, then utilizing the stoichiometry, then combining all of the above, and finally evaluating the parameters and equations. We will now apply this procedure or algorithm to a specific situation. In the following figure, we will see how the procedure and the algorithm is used to formulate the equation to calculate plug flow reactor volume for a first order gas phase reaction A goes to B. 
Okay, so let's start with the algorithm for the specific case. We say the first step in the algorithm is mole balance. So we choose the correct mole balance for plug flow reactor because we want to design a plug flow reactor for a first order, for a first order gas phase reaction. So here we go. This is the design equation for the plug flow reactor. Okay, when we write the design equation, we see that we have minus RA, minus RA, which is the rate of reaction. Therefore, this procedure, which is actually the most important procedure, because if you want to design the reactor, meaning if you want to find the volume of the reactor you will need to write the design equation and once you write the design equation you see that you will need to use the rate that's why we go to the second step see it's all logical so let's go to the second step which is writing the rate law so choose the irreversible first order reaction because obviously the reaction is first order so we write the rate law now that we wrote the rate law, we see that we have another unknown, which is the concentration. So we need to worry about concentration. Therefore, we go to the third step, which where we're going to utilize the stoichiometry in order to write the concentration in terms of conversion. So for a gas phase concentration, we have a flow system. This is the definition of concentration. Concentration Ca equals Fa over epsilon. And we know how to write Fa as a function of uh, conversion. And we know how to write epsilon as a function of conversion as well through these two equations. Okay. Where is the epsilon? Yeah, you know the epsilon. Epsilon equals epsilon not times the three correction factors. Ah, here it is. Because we have a gas system, gas phase reaction. Okay, and then we combine these two equations, substitute them in this equation, C equation, and we get an equation for CA as a function of conversion. Of course, if the pressure of the system was not constant we need to introduce another equation for pressure if the temperature of the system was not constant we will need to provide an equation for temperature but let's not worry about this now then we're going to combine all of the above so we're going to substitute for ca and the rate law using this equation and then we're going to substitute for minus ra with the resulting equation so that's that combining step and finally we're going to evaluate we're going to evaluate all the parameters and the design equation okay so we said the algorithm consists of mole balance rate law stoichiometry combine and then evaluate so you can see here we are evaluating the design equation the resulting design equation of course in this case to evaluate the differential equation means you need to find the algebraic equation through integration. How can you integrate? Of course, we can integrate either analytically, and please refer to appendix A1 to help you with this analytical integration. We can in integrate graphically, counting the relevant unit areas under the curve, which we don't do, or you can integrate numerically. Basically, if you're going to do hand calculation, you're going to use Appendix A4 to use the different uh, to use the different numerical methods, and you can also use a software to do the numerical integration. For example, Polymath or MATLAB. So with this, we reach the end of lecture 17 segment one where we have learned together the five steps in designing 
uh, reactor this is the five these are the five steps in designing a reactor and as we said it all depends on logic thank you very much and see you in the second segment of lecture 17